Hello gamers, we finally have new content for you coming to Apex Legends. Let's take a look at Season 11. We have Ash, the car SMG, care package weapon changes, and a couple of other legend changes to boot. There's plenty, plenty, plenty more coming, so don't worry. We will have more videos and more content on the way, but today we're just focused on the firing range and a couple of small changes worth noting. So first, of course, Ash, our incisive instigator and offensive assault class legend. Her passive is marked for death. If you ping an enemy's death box using the character interaction button, you will mark the attackers that created that death box for a period of time once per death box. Uh, there is no range specified here, and as of the time of recording, I have not had a chance to actually play with this content against other players, so I could not tell you if there is a duration or anything of that nature as of yet, but please be on the lookout for future videos where we will confirm or deny that. But the, the, the base idea here is you just get free intel as an offensive legend. You get to mark enemies. So we've had the last, let's see, four four legends in a row have the ability to mark opponents, although Ash and Fuse are kind of more of a soft marking where it's a very limited thing that they can do. But still, we have a lot of wall hacks and a lot of just enemy location revealing coming into the game these last few seasons. So definitely something that you want to have on your team, and it's getting to a point where it's very difficult to not have it on your team. Next up, we have her tactical, the Arc Snare. This is sort of like a throwing star kunai sort of thing with two blades. It'll go in a completely straight line out to effectively any distance. It just goes basically forever. Whenever an enemy is caught inside of its radius, uh, the projectile will stop and it will tether that enemy into place, dealing 20 damage to them. A direct hit will deal 41. So there is a lot a lot, a lot of damage potential that comes out of this ability. In addition, the ability to shoot very quickly after throwing it makes it a very deadly close range ability to use on an unsuspecting target or as just a great skill shot for big damage, movement disruption, the whole shebang. Very, very strong. Also, we have an ultimate, Phase Breach. Think of this as a one-way Wraith Portal that still anyone can use, but does not require you to move from point A to point B. You can use the portal at range. Here's an example. Press the Alt button. We can see this little indicator on the bottom of my screen showing where the portal exit is going to be placed. Let's see if we can teleport all the way over across the gap. A tear to give us an edge. And there we go. We have our little void tear. Very cool stylized. Phase tear here. Efficient. Perfect. And you can see the entrance is a much darker blue than the exit, which is a light blue, which is how you can tell which way goes, uh, which direction. It's also very short lived, maybe about 10 seconds or so. So your enemies can push you through it, but they have to decide very early on that that is something that they want to do. And if they don't make the commitment, it's going to go away and you're going to be safe. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that this portal cannot go anywhere that you want. You can't just portal straight up in the sky. Uh, it's going to try to put the portal onto the ground. So you're going to generally want to aim above where you actually want to go with the portal. So that way you make sure that the portal will land um, on, a, on reasonable ground for you and your teammates to actually land on once you exit the portal. So that is something that you very much need to keep in mind. Apart from that... As far as I'm aware, there are no other special passives or anything like that that this legend has. Just an overall good legend. Um, you have a female robotic body type, so this is very likely going to be some of the best AD strafing you can get in the game. Um, traditionally in respawn games, female, uh, female character models have the best AD strafing with the hips swaying much more than male models. And it just generally gives an advantage. This has been lessened and lessened over the years. Uh, so it remains to be seen how Ash is going to actually end up once we get into some real games. But that is something to keep an eye on to see if it is truly going to be uh, a defining factor of her kit. Now, we have some weapon changes. First and foremost, we have the G7 here. You'll notice in the bottom right, it's red. It's not its typical orange, gold kind of color like light ammo. This has been care packaged for this season. 
So the G7 comes pre-equipped with all the hop-ups that you could possibly want. All the attachments you could possibly want. Double tap is built in. It's going to be in double tap mode by default, so you'll have to manually switch it back to single fire if that is your preference. The optic by default is a 2x4, but I've gone ahead and switched it for a 2x because I prefer the base 2x over a 2x4 in most situations. The damage has gone up from 34, I believe, to 36. So very strong weapon, as always. 80 bullets in reserve by default, 20 in mag by default. Apart from that, as far as I'm aware, no other changes. Not sure if the hip fire has been adjusted or reload speeds or anything like that, but the damage has definitely gone up. Next up we have the car SMG, which is kind of the big draw of this season for a lot of people outside of Ash herself. This is an adaptable SMG that can use both light or heavy ammo. I guess I should say either light or heavy ammo. There are no stat differences between the ammo types whatsoever. You can press, for me, it's 5. For you, your weapon toggle button, or your weapon firing mode toggle button, to switch between light and heavy. You'll also notice in the bottom right that I have a gold light mag attached even when I'm in heavy mode. This is by design. The weapon can accept either a light mag or a heavy mag. So this is the definition of an adaptable weapon. Whatever ammo type you find, except for like arrows and stuff like that, you can shove it into this gun and make it work and it will perform very, very well. Now let's go ahead and drop all the attachments off of this just so we get kind of a, a baseline. Here's the iron sights and we'll shoot some bots here that I've set to move around and actually fight me. Just so we can see what the recoil patterns are like, what it'll feel like to actually use it against something that's not standing completely still. By the way, here is our recoil pattern just going straight up, not with any control whatsoever. So it's really not bad at all. A very, very mild amount of control is going to get you most of the way there. Not my favorite iron sights in the world, but I've definitely, definitely seen worse. I'm sure all of you Titanfall fans are wondering, how's the hip fire? Let me tell you, it's not Titanfall hip fire, that's for sure. In either case, one or two, it's neither. It is worse than both. You also may be wondering, how is the mid-air accuracy or the accuracy while on zip lines? And let me tell you, it's pretty abysmal. This weapon is true to its Titanfall roots in name. But not really in spirit. Ow. Why do you get a peacekeeper? Okay, cool. I'm trying to do stuff here. Can you not kill me? Please? Just just let it happen. No! Okay, well. Regardless. The weapon's performance midair is just as subpar as every other weapon in this game. That is not a complaint. That is not in condemnation. Just a note, to be honest, to all of our Titanfall people here, will you stop killing me, please? Let's go ahead and put some actual attachments on here. If I will stop dying, please just let me loot. Thank you. Okay. Streamer man, bad aim. I promise, the gun's accuracy is actually really good. It's me that's bad, not the gun, okay? This is a weapon that I am very scared of with how its performance looks from just this version of the game that I'm playing. The performance is... It's really good. Like, even with the hip fire not being in Titanfall levels, it's just... It's just good. Like, your headshots are dealing 20 damage. That's a lot. For the rate of fire that we're at. Go ahead and switch to light ammo here. Again, no performance differences whatsoever. Streamer might aim better with light ammo, but doesn't mean that it's performing better. Let's do a full hip fire here when this guy respawns. 
So, like, pretty comparable to the R99 and the Prowler. Like, there, there's certainly not a lot wrong with this hip fire. But it's, you know, just, 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 you have to temper your expectations if you're coming at this expecting a Titanfall car SMG, because that is not, that is not what this weapon is. This, this weapon feels pretty unique, um, to me. It looks like the car, it sounds like the car, but it doesn't really feel like it. But it's okay. But just something to be, to be completely honest about. Maybe let's throw in some, uh, some McHughes in against these nerds. It just adds so much damage if you can hit something direct. Which, against these bots, of course you'll hit direct, but... Nice aim, streamer. Good job. <laughs> well... Maybe we should just call it here. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you guys, and this is actually going to be very cool for our, oops, for our Watson players. This is the only other thing that I have noticed as being a major change so far. Uh, and this affects her ultimate. So her alt no longer has a timer on it once you put it down. So her alt will last forever once again. However, it has sort of like a battery charge now. So the more that it gets utilized to either recharge shields or block uh, incoming projectiles, that will deplete some of the charge. But you'll see here, it's not ticking down. And also, that's a strange bug where it's blocking these L-Star bullets. <laughs> that's interesting. That's just a firing mode bug, I think. But, uh... But yeah, I guess it's probably, maybe it's, it's like considering these to be Cold War projectiles for Titanfall 2 and those are coded as like explosives, so it blocks that. I'm not really sure, but regardless, that's a bug. Don't read anything into that. But yeah, look, this just lasts and lasts and lasts. It just goes and, and goes and goes. Even when it charges my Q, it's not consuming the overall charge of the ult. So this just lasts and lasts and lasts. It's only when you take damage and it starts to recharge your shield. So, come on, get some hits on me. Thank you. Thank you. And now, you'll see, now as soon as it's recharging my shields, now that timer is ticking down. So, calling it a timer is a bit disingenuous because that is not what it is. It is, uh, think of it more like a battery charge. So this is a pretty huge change for Watson players. So hopefully this is uh, this is one of those better than nothing changes that helps to make the character a bit more enjoyable for um, for all of you out there. Apart from that, there may be some other changes that we have not noticed yet. Uh, I will investigate as much of that as I can as I get more playtime throughout the rest of today. I'm recording this first thing in the morning before our uh, before our play session, so. There is plenty, plenty more for us to see and to learn about. But this is the stuff that I have noticed so far. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Hope you're as excited for Season 11 as I am. I'll see you again soon. Y'all take care.